Uh, unfortunately not, because life would be a lot easier if there was. In each country it has its own patent system, so you'd have a US patent, you'd have a German patent, you'd have a Japanese patent or a Chinese patent. Uh, each individual country has its own intellectual property office and these are national rights. However, on top of that we have some regionalisation. So for example we have a European patent under the European Patent Convention. We have a, U a Eurasian patent under the Eurasian uh, Convention which is very similar to the European Patent Convention but covers a different set of states. Um, interestingly, the Euro European patent is not a European Union patent, it's an intergovernmental organisation. Uh, it has currently 38 contracting states and then there are four other states where the patent can be extended. Two are called extension states and two are called validation states. Uh, although it all includes all European Union states, there are other states in there as well. Then at the layer above that, uh, we have an international patent application. So you'll notice I said application there instead of patent because it is only ever an application. Uh, it has a maximum duration of 30 months from the earliest filing date anywhere in the world. So uh, at the moment it covers 152 states uh, including Euro Europe and the United States and some uh, reg regionalised uh, systems. Um, if you file an international patent application uh, you get 30 months in which you can have centralised examination and search in a single language, which is very cost effective. And then at the end of 30 months, you then drop out into the national system and you uh, follow individual ones of the national patents which you want to continue with. So at the end of the international phase, there is the right but not the obligation to continue in national or regional phases.